Great Britain is home to many species of wildlife and from a nectar collecting bee to a greater spotted woodpecker, nature watchers have for centuries been enjoying the delights of the countryside. Many of us are introduced to such observations as children, scattering breadcrumbs in the garden for a spot of bird watching. Robins, blackbirds, sparrows and blue tits can be enticed to feed from our lawns and bird tables all over Britain in this way and from an early age this fascination will invariably stay with us to last an entire lifetime. And of course, as we gradually learn to move quietly and not frighten the creatures we are watching, the range of wildlife that can be tracked down will grow accordingly. Yet there is one species resident in this country that although quite common, is very hard to catch a glimpse of. Some people will live to be a hundred and never see one of these most remarkable of creatures. Nevertheless, if a dog-sized furry animal walked past you, snuffling and snorting as it went, with a black and white striped face, you would immediately recognise it as a badger. Few animals are as distinctive as the badgers that populate Great Britain, and should you ever be lucky enough to encounter one of these creatures in the wild, you can guarantee it will be an experience you'll never forget. Badgers are by nature retiring animals that invariably live in close association with humans, most usually on the edge of woodland with rich pasture close by. If this description sounds familiar, that's because we're talking about perfect farming country and most of the farms of Great Britain will have badgers somewhere close by. However, there are many issues surrounding badgers and farming, notably the ongoing TB debate that links badgers with bovine tuberculosis and consequently badgers are very wary of humans for very good reason. Also, when the majority of us embark on a walk in the countryside, it's usually during the day and badgers are at their most active during the night. A fortunate bird watcher may spot a rare species by chance in daylight, but if you're looking for badgers to be successful, you will have to plan your trip down to the last detail. The chances of a random sighting would indeed be rather slim. Nevertheless, badger watching is fascinating and enjoyed by all kinds of people from just about every walk of life and it's hard to pinpoint precisely what the attraction is. They are of course delightful to look at but badgers are also steeped in country folklore and some of our best loved children's literature features the wise old brock, a traditional rural nickname for this intriguing animal. Country folk of ages past used to be very suspicious of these mystical creatures that appeared in the moonlight and there's a well-known rhyme that is still remembered to this day. Should you hear a badger call and then an oolot cry, make thy peace with God, good soul, for thou shalt shortly die. Now, should you be wondering what an oolot is, it's actually an old country name for an owl. And bearing in mind that you're most likely to see or hear a badger at night, the chances of this happening are quite high. But don't worry, many tales of ancient folklore contradict each other completely. 
If you'd travelled back in ages past to a different part of the country, you might well have heard this rhyme instead. Should a badger cross the path which thou hast taken, then good luck is thine, so it be said, beyond the luck of men. But if it cross in front of thee, beyond where thou shalt tread, and if by chance doth turn the mould, thou art numbered with the dead. It's still not all good news, but your chances of surviving the encounter have at least improved to 50-50. But despite most of these old superstitions fading into distant memories, like many good country tales, there is an element of common sense underpinning the sentiments. A badger today is a very strong animal, just as it always was, and truly is best left well alone. The bite of an adult male could do great damage to a human and an ancient superstition that made the local folk wary of these creatures was certainly no bad thing. And for modern day badger watchers, this note of caution is equally valid. There are plenty of organised badger watches you can participate in, run by various wildlife trusts all over the country. But if you would prefer to do it for yourself, then this programme will be very helpful indeed. We'll explore the ways in which you can improve your chances of seeing badgers, while ensuring that these shy and retiring creatures are not disturbed in any way. But before we begin, there are some basic principles of nature watching that need to be considered, which hold equally true whatever you are hoping to watch out in the wild. A bird watcher will learn everything possible about the life cycle and preferred habitats of their target species. For example, you won't see a woodpecker of any description if there are no trees in the vicinity. The bird watcher needs to know the most likely locations to spot a bird and understanding the habitat they favour will significantly improve the odds of being successful. Equally, if you take the common or garden blackbird, or so you would think, knowledge of their life cycle can be very helpful. In fact, this species disappears from sight during the autumn months to molt, but will return for the winter resplendent with new plumage, something very few people realise. So we need to go right back to basics and put together a profile of the badger, including what it eats, where it lives and how it reproduces. This will then enable us, wherever we live in the British Isles, to work out the most likely places in the neighbourhood where a badger watch might prove worthwhile. The type of badger that you will spot in the United Kingdom is a specific subspecies of the badger family called the Eurasian badger and there are about 310,000 of them living concealed in the countryside at any given time, although this number may fluctuate due to changes in conditions. 
The Eurasian badger is widespread throughout Europe and Asia, as the name would suggest, populating areas as far apart as Southern Ireland and China. When we catch our first glimpse of a badger, it looks a little like a bear, albeit a very small one, and people first thought that they were part of the bear family. The badger, in fact, belongs to the Mustelidae family, along with weasels and stoats. And when you look more closely, this does make more sense. This badger subspecies is instantly recognisable by a number of characteristics, the most prominent being the delightful facial markings. Most people know the black and white striped head, even if they've not been lucky enough to see one up close and personal. Interestingly, there are two reasons why it's thought the badger has evolved such distinctive markings. The first explanation is that in the wild, sometimes fighting is inevitable, although wherever possible, badgers will avoid this. However, the black and white face is believed to be a form of warning, so other creatures know not to get too close because the consequences would be extreme. Then secondly, as bizarre as it might sound, the markings help to keep the badgers camouflaged when they are out and about in the countryside searching for food. On a bright sunny day this would be no good at all, but you have to remember that badgers come out at night and the black and white colouring means they can blend in better with their dark surroundings. Badgers can be effortlessly concealed in the moonlight and chances are that even if you walked right past one, you might fail to notice it was there. However, despite badgers being exceptionally skilled at moving around undetected, they are actually quite big, which demonstrates just how good they are at blending into the background. Adult badgers can grow up to 90 centimetres in length and weigh around about 11 kilograms. They will be heavier at the beginning of the winter as they have spent the summer building up their fat reserves to survive the colder months. During the winter they don't hibernate as many other British mammals like the hedgehogs do, they simply stay in the warm. When the colder weather comes, we all spend more of our evenings in front of the fire rather than venturing outside. Badgers would be able to hibernate if a winter was really severe, adapting to any conditions they find themselves in. As a general rule though, badger watching in winter is unlikely to reward you with any good sightings. It's far better to wait until the weather gets warmer.
When asked what colour a badger is, we will all invariably reply that it's black and white and grey. Although the main body of a badger does appear to be grey, this is actually one of nature's optical illusions. The fur is white with black tips, but as they are all clumped together, they give the impression of being grey in colour. Many Eurasian badgers may even look brown. However, this isn't an optical illusion. It's simply the soil and dust that frequently covers the badger's fur due to the incredible amount of digging they do. The next distinctive feature you may notice will probably be the badger's short legs as they carry out a very specific job apart from the obvious as a means of transport. Way back in time, the ancient country folk used to actually believe that badgers had longer legs on one side of their body than the other. The reason for this was that badgers used to spend a lot of time on hillsides and it was thought that they had legs of different lengths to keep them upright. This was of course a myth because had it been true, the badgers would have toppled over as soon as they were onto level ground. And as you can see for yourself, this is definitely not the case. More importantly though, the stocky, powerful legs are perfect for the all-important task of digging, something badgers are extremely good at. Badgers are very keen diggers and in fact it's been suggested that their name is derived from the French word boche, which loosely translated means a digger. The forelegs are incredibly strong, responsible for much of the earth moving and the paws can best be described as being like small spades with the added benefit of long claws to help cut through the soil. And you only have to look at a badger set to see just how proficient they are at DIY excavations. A set is the name given to the place where badgers live, consisting of tunnels and chambers not dissimilar to human homes, with areas allocated to specific purposes. They also tend to be different sizes as well, according to how many badgers are living there. Ranging from huge, where a badger colony has been in existence for centuries, or tiny, if it's only been around for a few years. One thing you will notice about a badger set is just how clean the entire area is and if you find yourself stepping in something unpleasant you can be certain it wasn't left there by a badger. These creatures, unlike many wild animals, use out of set site specific latrines. A badger toilet isn't complicated, being a simple hole in the ground, sometimes on territorial borders with others located closer to home. This obviously helps to keep the set in good order, but badgers are equally particular about their bedding as well. They will source fresh straw and grass to cover the floors of their bedchambers with and throw out the used bedding. Having seen just how large badger sets can be, you also realise that as well as being good housekeepers, they are also pretty sociable, often choosing to live in large groups called clans. The size of a badger clan will be determined by the amount of food available in the territory, with a clan leader that will always be the dominant male. Badgers can provide a very strong social group in which to bring up young and their breeding patterns are equally as fascinating as every other aspect of this mammal's quite remarkable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
Badgers use a reproductive system called delayed implantation. Although the most active mating season is in February, the badger can actually mate at any time and still give birth when conditions are most suitable for rearing cubs, usually in early spring. The fertilised eggs slowly develop into tiny balls of cells that remain suspended in the womb. Then, when the time is right, they implant on the wall of the uterus and begin their seven weeks gestation. This gives the female more opportunities to mate while increasing her offspring's chances of survival. The cubs are born as the warmer weather begins, which means they have a whole year to eat well to prepare for their first winter. Despite this head start that badger cubs get, sadly only one in three will make it beyond their first year, with the average lifespan of a badger in the wild being just three years. Having spent some time discovering how badgers live and enjoyed watching these rare images of a family at play, it's hard to imagine these lovely creatures not being welcome wherever they went. But there are folk who would prefer not to be visited by badgers. For city dwellers, as sightings are few and far between, Badgers might at first glance seem to be a delightful addition to parks, gardens and even golf courses. But those charged with caring for these green spaces have a very different point of view. Down through the centuries, badgers have followed paths to feeding grounds that have been used by their ancestors for generations and they will permit nothing to stand in their way. For example, if a new house is built close to one of these ancient routes, with a garden fence that actually crosses a badger path, it probably won't stay intact for long. These single-minded creatures will simply put their heads down and keep on walking, scratching, digging and bashing their way through until the obstacle is no more. Needless to say, this does upset a lot of gardeners, especially as fixing these fences can prove very expensive and the badgers will continue to break through them at every possible opportunity. Fortunately, there are people who are trying to live more peaceably with the badgers, incorporating flaps into their fences where any damage is done, so the determined animals can pass through with no problem. However, when the badgers notice the delightful array of bulbs and worms a garden has to offer, it can be another story altogether, as these rich sources of food are explored. Many people spend a great deal of time and money tending their gardens, buying exotic plants and keeping their lawns lush and green. The last thing they want is an uninvited badger guest scampering about. Where they can, badgers will keep to their traditional rural feeding grounds. However, when food supplies run low, they will look further afield. Screams can then be heard across the country when diligent gardeners wake up to find that their lawn has been damaged by over-enthusiastic badgers digging holes in search of worms and grubs. These lawn vandalising dents are called snuffle holes because they're made when the badger sticks its snout into the soil for a good rummage around. And when they find bulbs, the badgers will have a feast, leaving a trail of destruction that a gardener will despair at.
But it's not all doom and gloom. Badgers can do some good in gardens as well, getting rid of a range of garden pests. And if your backyard is plagued by a wasp's nest, one of the best ways to eliminate it would be to let a badger into your garden. They love the wasp grubs, so in the dead of night when the wasps are sleeping, the badger will attack, breaking into the nest to devour everything inside. Although it's after the grubs, should any dozing wasps get in the way, the badger will eat them too, even if it means getting stung. It's been recorded that 300 wasps were once found in a dead badger's stomach, while archives show that in 1905 a group of badgers ate 40 wasp nests in just two nights over a small area of Sussex. Nevertheless, wasps' nests are pretty rare in rural and urban gardens, and if you're someone who prefers to keep the badgers out, building chain wire fences that reach a few feet underground will usually do the trick. But if it's only a few bulbs and the odd hole here and there, badger lovers would always say this was a small price to pay for a glimpse of these magical animals, quite literally, in your own backyard. Now, there might be a degree of cursing and complaining about badgers amongst gardeners, but the worst that's going to happen is a big fence will be erected. But when it comes to the relationship between farmers and badgers, the consequences can be a lot more serious. TB in cattle is a problem that can destroy the livelihood of dairy farmers, as any milk that comes from cows where TB is even so much as suspected is unusable, and it can take months for the disease to be cleared and a herd certified TB free for milk production to recommence. Unfortunately, the landscape that is best suited to dairy farming is where you are most likely to find badgers, and it's impossible to say whether the badgers infect the cattle or it's vice versa. Although never proved, badgers have for many years been blamed for spreading the disease. Cattle herds are vital to this country's agricultural economy, so it's understandable that drastic action has been called for. Since the year 2000, culling experiments have been carried out in some of the worst affected areas of Great Britain, with up to 11,000 badgers killed so far. But the jury is still out on the results, as nothing conclusive has yet emerged. Consequently, badger protection groups are working hard to make sure the numbers culled are kept to a minimum, forcing the agriculture experts to find alternative solutions for this very tricky problem, as a sharp fall in badger numbers would be a great loss for the wildlife of Great Britain. On a more positive note, the wildlife conservationists are making a vital contribution to badger protection, ensuring that those that are not under threat from TB culls are preserved. When roads are built that cross badger paths, developers are encouraged to build underpasses so the intransigent creatures can cross without being endangered. Sadly, the only time the majority of us will ever get to see badgers is when they are dead at the roadside because the numbers killed by cars is horribly high. As road usage increases and traffic volume grows, even in more rural areas, this is a problem that's likely to continue to get worse because although developers can provide underpasses, there will never be any guarantee 
that the badgers will actually use them. Unfortunately, the pace of development in Great Britain doesn't only endanger badgers. The very heart of the countryside that we all know and love is in need of constant protection, and laws have been put in place that make sure the nation's landscapes, along with the plants and animals that inhabit them, are not interfered with. Over the years, the badger has needed the full protection of the law, as historically the cruel practice of badger baiting needed to be wiped out. And although as nature watchers we mean the badgers no harm, we do need to be aware of current legislation. The badger has been a protected species since 1992, and this means it is illegal to damage, destroy or obstruct a badger set in any way, and it is also against the law to have a badger, living or dead, in your possession, or to hurt one, intentionally or otherwise. Not, of course, that any nature enthusiast would contemplate doing any of these things, but it's always good to be clear about what the law is before you start badger watching. For example, having found an ideal set, it might be tempting to remove foliage to give you a better view, but this would indeed be against the law. So, for the rest of this programme, we will be looking at the best ways to enjoy badger watching without disturbing or upsetting them in any way. With just about everything we need to know about these elusive creatures now covered, we can begin our quest to watch badgers in their natural habitat. One of the great joys of badger watching is that no special equipment is needed, just a keen eye and an awful lot of patience. But before we venture out into the dark night, we have to find a local badger set, and this can be equally as tricky as finding the creatures themselves. This is where doing your homework will truly make the difference between seeing badgers or not. And of course, it's much easier to work out your location in daylight so you can plan your nighttime badger watching with precision. Badger sets may be massive mansions underground, but all we are going to see while out and about in the countryside will be a series of holes. Badgers will build their sets in all sorts of places, but there are generally distinctive characteristics of the locations that they favour. As we've already seen, Woodland near to pasture land is a popular choice, with fields that can offer a plentiful supply of juicy worms and fat grubs for the badgers to feast upon. Woods with streams in have a better chance of attracting badgers as they need to be close to a water supply, and uneven ground with mounds and dips also seems to entice them more than a perfectly flat glade. Although you'll certainly discover badger sets like this one for yourself, there truly is no substitute for local knowledge and talking to other nature watchers in the area can be a real help. You may discover a nearby badger watching group, which can be a very good place to start, especially as when you find a set, you can't always guarantee that even the finest collection of holes in the ground are occupied by badgers. So we need to do a little more detective work. It's no good sitting for hours on end outside the wrong type of hole, or worse still, a deserted one.
We have to remember that foxes and rabbits also live in similar types of burrows and dens and will happily take over a disused badger set as a ready-made home. This is where understanding the way a badger lives really does help. As we already know, badgers are very clean, even digging latrines away from the set. Also, there will never be debris left around entrances and exits, and if a fox or rabbit is in residence, you'll certainly know about it. You only have to sniff the air to know if you found a foxhole, because the stench will be awful, in stark contrast to a sweet-smelling badger set. A rabbit burrow will not smell quite as bad, and there won't be a trail of carcasses and feathers left outside either, but you will find plenty of telltale droppings to give the game away. This extra detective work will only really be necessary where these animals have taken over a badger set, as the rabbit and fox are much smaller creatures, so naturally their entrance holes will be scaled down accordingly. An amateur naturalist once said that he could always tell who was at home by putting his hand in the tunnel to work the size out. If it was possible to open a clenched fist up and move around, then it was most likely to be a badger's residence. However, in general, this is definitely not a technique to be recommended. Firstly, if you remember, it's against the law, as you would be interfering with a set. But even more importantly, a badger's bite is something to be avoided at all cost. This is the perfect time to mention just how powerful the jaws of a badger can be. On the whole, a badger is a docile and timid creature that will keep its head down and stay out of trouble wherever possible. But when threatened, with no means of escape, it will fight to the death. So stick to visual indications and the smell, and from a safe distance, you'll have the best possible chance of seeing the badgers come out when darkness falls, without having any unplanned encounters along the way. Having got this far, we can be pretty sure that we're looking at a badger set, and our next job is to find out if it's still in use or if the inhabitants have moved on. This enormous badger set has actually been deserted for some time, and if you find spider's webs left undisturbed across entrances, you can be almost certain there are no badgers around. Also, returning to the subject of latrines, we know that badgers dig small holes to use a short distance from the set entrance, and it's worth looking around for them. These holes won't be very deep, and their numbers vary according to how many badgers are living in the set. Another clue would be to look for paw prints, which are distinctive and a good indication of badger activity. Close observation of the area around the entrance will show any prints leading in or out, but do remember if the soil is very dry or covered in leaves, the absence of paw prints alone doesn't mean badgers aren't close by. One last pointer that may be of some help is to see if the badgers have built a new extension recently, as soil that's been excavated from the set will be piled up outside, and of course, any bedding that's been cleared out or a heap of fresh material ready to go in can also confirm badger activity.
When you start badger watching, you won't necessarily find all of these clues, perhaps only one or two, but you will soon be able to develop a sense of whether it's worth watching a badger set further. Badgers are nocturnal creatures and spend most of the day fast asleep and really only venture out in daylight on rare occasions, so it's not worth setting up camp until the sun is getting low in the sky and the day's activities are drawing to a close. The woodland takes on a whole new atmosphere from dusk until nightfall and it's a completely different place once the daylight has faded. The twittering bird song will draw to a close and the grazing sheep will start to settle as the countryside comes alive once more with the creatures of the night. Just because you're out looking for badgers, don't forget to look out for other nocturnal species. It may be a long wait for some badger activity, so make the most of every sighting. If you're well concealed and quiet, animals like field mice and foxes can appear out of nowhere and start scavenging for food under the cover of darkness. Should you be lucky enough to also have birch trees close by, they can look wonderful if the moonlight catches them. The people of the Northern Hemisphere used to call the birch the Shining One as it used to help lighten the forest through the dark months of winter by reflecting the moonlight. The birch also grows in sandy soils, so this is definitely a possibility, providing a great environment for badgers because they can dig with ease through the softer soil. When on the lookout for badgers, it truly is a case of seeing without being seen. It's not, however, as big a problem as it might appear, as a badger's eyesight is not its most highly developed sense. They rely far more on their amazing sense of smell and excellent hearing, so make sure you keep downwind wherever possible and needless to say, remain as quiet as the little mouse you've just been looking at. Even so, despite the badger's poor eyesight, be careful not to stand out. It's no good wearing bright colours. You need to select dark clothing that doesn't rustle as you move. Hiding our human smell is a little harder and does take more care and although we can't get rid of our scent, we can do our best to mask it from the badger's inquisitive nose. Make sure that when you're walking down to the set, not to wander across the paths or set entrances the badgers use. They'll be able to smell that an intruder has come into their territory and may well hide away for an entire night if they do. Another good point to remember is that it's essential that the wind is travelling from the set towards you. If not, they will almost definitely smell you, a mile off so to speak, whatever the conditions. Try to find a vantage point where you can feel the wind on your face. This will mean that your smell is being taken away from the badger set and will significantly improve your chances of seeing these delightful creatures out in the moonlight. This now brings us on to the subject of the badger's acute hearing. It can't be stressed enough that you need to move at a slow, gentle pace to make sure the noise that you create is minimal. 
It's no use talking with companions all the way there, to be quiet once you get into watching position, as the badgers would have been able to hear you chatting from some distance. And by the time you get to the set, there will be no possibility whatsoever of them coming out. Also, try to avoid stepping on twigs or walking through long grass, as the sounds will ring alarm bells for the badger. So the trick is simply to be as careful and precise as you can. And now we really are ready for some serious badger watching. As it could be a long night, take something comfortable to sit on. A folding chair might be useful, as long as it doesn't squeak too much. Some more experienced badger watchers build hides like this one, which is something you would need to do if you wanted to get some good photographs. However, you don't have to go to these extremes to begin with, but badger watching is surprisingly addictive and a hide may be something well worth considering when you've established regular viewings at a given set. They may be big structures that are easy to spot to the human eye, but to a badger they blend into the woodland and help to mask your smell and conceal any movements. If you want to construct a hide, make sure you find out whose land the badger set is on and ask their permission. The last thing you want on an all-night badger vigil are the sirens of the local police force scaring off the badgers while you are prosecuted for trespass. You can, of course, buy tent-like hides, but this one was very easy to make from stacked-up straw bales with camouflage netting over the top. The other great thing about a straw hide is the warmth it can provide, as even in the middle of summer it can get quite cold. And remember, extra layers of clothes are always handy. In the case of this hide, it's interesting to note that when it became established, the badgers would even venture close enough to gather some of the straw for bedding. Tell-tale trails were quite a giveaway and, needless to say, delighted the badger watchers who had constructed it. But for now, we need to play a waiting game. If you're lucky, it may be minutes, but more likely it will be hours. Just remember to be patient. If you get a few nights with no sightings, don't lose heart. You need to persevere if you want to succeed. In the past, people used to leave food near badger sets to tempt them out, using bread, nuts and even cat food. But this is less common these days. With little knowledge of a badger's dietary requirements, folk would often leave out the wrong kinds of food, which could have a damaging effect on the badger's health. Badgers, like many humans, have a really sweet tooth, but for a creature designed to eat other small animals, worms, insects and wild fruits, any high-fat and sugary foods can be really bad for their digestive systems, even though it might get these magical creatures to come out. Just keep watching and the badgers should appear of their own accord and before you know it, in the dead of night, when you're about ready to give up and go home, the seemingly impossible happens. A little snout pops out of the ground and starts sniffing the air. Now don't get too excited, stay perfectly still because this is when the badger will be at its most cautious, checking in every direction for any sights, sounds or smells that are not familiar. If the slightest thing is wrong, then the cautious animal will disappear out of sight. 
Let the badger do its final safety checks, stay calm and let it emerge slowly from the set. Once outside, it will not be quite as cautious, but don't forget that any sudden sounds or movements from you will still send the badger darting back down its hole again. Humans have persecuted the badger for hundreds of years, so it's hardly surprising that they are so careful and you will need to put in time and effort to build up their trust. The first badger out will probably have a good forage outside and then if you're very lucky, the rest of the clan will make their way out of the set. This really is a sight to treasure like no other and after all the anticipation will always exceed your expectations. Many people will go through their entire lives without seeing a badger, one of Britain's most traditional residents, but all it takes is a little know-how and commitment to put the matter right. The end result is always worth the hard work and with a greater understanding of the beautiful British badger, the future for this creature will be more assured. Hopefully, this programme will have inspired you to go out in search of these most wonderful black and white creatures. They may avoid human contact, as we've learned for very good reason, but this is not an insurmountable problem for the dedicated badger watcher who only wants to look and perhaps take photographs. There will always be controversy surrounding badgers and unfortunately in our fast developing world there will forever be conflicting points of view. The same is true of fox hunting, deer stalking and game shooting, where the ancient traditions of the countryside have lost all meaning for an urban population. where human beings are now encroaching upon land that was once only the province of the country's wildlife, there will inevitably be problems. A farmer who relies upon a healthy dairy herd for his livelihood will view badgers with suspicion until the TB issue has been proved one way or the other. Gardeners whose fences have been broken and flower beds raided by marauding badgers will feel very differently about these creatures than the nature watchers do. However, this makes protecting the badger as a British species all the more important and after seeing these beautiful animals in their natural environment, few would argue that this was anything but perfectly justified. Sadly, our time watching the badgers of Britain has come to an end. As this charming family of badgers enjoys a fine evening out in the moonlight, it's time for us to slip away, leaving no trace of ever having been here. The only record is photographic and simply knowing that the badgers exist is enough to be a source of great pleasure, even if we never get to see them in the wild. The landscape of Great Britain is a joy on our doorstep, made all the richer by the badgers that call this green and pleasant land home. Thank you.